It's my pleasure and honor this morning to introduce our speaker, and she has been an ordained minister since uh, 1998 in religious science, and um, I'm somewhat biased about her because she's also my wife. <laughs> Good thing to say. <laughs> we have co-pastored churches together over the years, and she has always just been aligned with speaking this truth, whether it's our sister organization Unity or Authority New Thought Network, it's just all one great message. And this morning she's going to bring a bit of her California heritage to us with her talk on your e-coupon ride, what are you waiting for? So I'd like to introduce her and Mary Beth Spirit. the sun, the sun came mm -hmm. out, oh, so I uh, acknowledge that we have some sunshine. It is always such a great honor and delight to be in somebody else's pulpit, and I can't think of a, of a more wonderful pulpit to be in than Greg Barrett's. I have such immense love and delight in our minister, don't you? I think. fun to be here. I, I always just love being out there, but it's wonderful to be up here too. I have a couple of things to say. Um, I was thinking a lot after last week's talk, and I don't know how many of you heard him speak on that delicate little subject that was called Control Freaks Del uh, Re Re Remedy. Control Freaks Remedy <laughs> had my attention because I've been known to leave a few claw marks. I don't know if I'm feeling <laughs> in this process of change. <laughs> And of course, he gives me one of my very favorite affirmations, which I use whether I like it or not. We'll do it now. Change, I love it. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Let's do it together. Change, I love it. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. And you know, that's just sort of giving the universe a big blank check, isn't it? When you say this. So you got to really mean change, I love it. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. One of the things that Reverend Greg talked about last week and gave us the question is, in the upcoming week, where could I, I'll use I, where could I let go of control? Of course, my husband was really excited about this one. <laughs> you know, he, <laughs> he always helps me do my work, right? <laughs> so I began to think about where can I lose control? You know, and there's just these activities sometimes we do that really help us lose control. I don't know about the rest of you, but I can totally lose control dancing. <laughs> I just love to dance. Of course, I do that with, you know, the curtains shut and, you know, to uh, dancing with the stars or something, maybe not always in public, but I'm getting better. But I love to dance. I love to meditate. I love to write, to listen to beautiful music. I get lost in beautiful music. <clears throat> Taking walks. I mean, the other night we were sitting out on our deck, and for the first time since I've been here, in Illinois, and that's since 2008, I saw a shooting star. Mm. And you, you, you know, you feel, you know, when you see a shooting star. And just some of these moments where I just felt completely lost, and I had no need to be trying to control things. One of the things you've probably heard, and I know we have no visitors, so we're all good friends here, and one of the things we have all heard here at one time or another is seek first the kingdom and what? <coughs> All else is what? Yeah. Is given, will be added, right? And so this idea about what kingdom are we seeking, what we're seeking is that higher plane of consciousness that does allow us to release this need to control so that we can really be in that place of, as the Buddhists would refer to, willful determination but non-attachment to result. 
You know, it's that attachment that really does create a lot of the suffering that we go, go through, isn't it? Because, you know, if something happens and we want it, we're happy. If something doesn't happen or happens differently, we're not happy. So we kind of move in these states of happy, unhappy, happy, unhappy, depending on what the results are that we're getting. But when we seek the kingdom, what we're really seeking is the consciousness of allowing ourselves to realize that for whatever things are happening to us, they really, truly, as we teach a new thought, are happening through us. So when we say, change, I love it, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on, we're saying, change, come through me because I am allowing myself now to be permeable to life so that life truly can have its way with me in ways I can't even possibly necessarily imagine because it's my job to wake up to dream. And so that's all of those interesting nuances we talk about, easy to talk about here, isn't it, in the safety, easy to go to coffee and give love and be loved. And then we go out and bam, here comes the spiritual amnesia, right? <laughs> what did they say in there? And so that's why I take notes, so I remember what they said in there. So one of the things about this kingdom, how do we get in there? How do we enter that kingdom? Well, Jesus said it really simply. He said we enter it as a child. In fact, he says we can't even get into the kingdom of heaven if we don't enter it as a child. So, you know, you think about the qualities, and I've got that beautiful little eight-month-old grandson, and, you know, anybody who would like to hit me up to see pictures afterwards, you know, <laughs> might just miss But my beautiful grandson, Roland, really exemplifies to me a lot of the qualities of childlikeness. And remember, we're not ta talking childish, we're talking childlike. We're talking about innocence. We're talking about spontaneity. We're talking about the quality of unconditional openness and love. We're talking about humility. Children really are humble, meaning humility by definition means the point of willingness to learn. Children want to learn everything, sometimes all at once, you know, like me. But uh, the other one they have is beautiful, is curiosity. You know, do you ever take a walk with children in nature? The curiosity, especially if you can get down there and get to the near their eye level. Um, I just love it. We went to the um, aquarium, shed aquarium the other day with my grandson, my eight-month-old grandson, Roland, and watching the fish through Roland's eyes. I watched, I watched Roland while he watches the fish, you know. <laughs> and what's really fun with Roland, too, he watches the people, too. He's so interested in watching people and trying to get people's eye contact. And there's an unabashed <coughs> openness, not staring, but just connecting. And generally, you get that one little dimple grin, which, you know, makes the whole day. Again, I'm a little prejudiced back here. <laughs> <laughs> so what I really enjoy is areas where we can be childlike. Well, this takes me back to a few other weeks ago when Reverend Greg gave another talk. And I really do listen, don't I, to these talks, because I can tell you what they were, a lot of them. I take notes. And one of them he talked about was this thing of the U coupon ride. Okay, so I'd like to see who of you knew what he was talking about or know what I'm talking about when I say we're going to take an E coupon ride. Wow, you guys, this is so great. So you're getting a lot of California today. Because if, if I was in California, anywhere probably in California, if we said E coupon ride, every hand would go up because it's related to Disneyland. In Southern California, back in the 60s, it's 60 years old now, they opened the very first Disneyland. And I was privy to a lot of those very, very, very early rides that were in that Disneyland. A lot of my friends, we can still walk you around every corridor in Disneyland and tell you what used to be there, which is really fun. Well, at Disneyland, back in those days, the, it was, and it's called the Magic Kingdom, so entering the kingdom. Anyway, and in those days, when you got admission, you didn't just get a flat admission, off you go. You got a coupon book. And you had coupons that were weighted by the level of the, big, the largesse or the bigness of the, of the ride or the technology of it. They were rated A through, guess what? E. e. Okay. A. You know, like merry-go-rounds horse-drawn carriages, train around the park, and there was a train that ran all the way around the park, 
And it went on, and guess what those e-coupon rides were? Coasters. Those are the thrill rides. Those are the ones when you stand in line waiting, you can feel it in your stomach. <laughs> and you're going, do I really want to do this? <laughs> but you do because, you know, you go there because you want to be scared joyous, right? E-coupon rides are the scared joyous rides. They're the ones that are going to take us to the edge. So I thought, you know, to share with you a little bit about my metaphor, because I'm using Disneyland today as a metaphor. And Disneyland, it, you enter through the imagination, so it is, the it is in the nation of imagination that this land resides. When you first walk into Disneyland, you walk down Main Street. And of course, you're very excited to clutching that coupon book. And on Main Street, it's nostalgic. It's quiet. <laughs> It's the good old days. Remember those good old days? It's yesteryear. It's all those things we keep remembering or thinking we remember, even though it's probably never really was like that, but we thought it was, and so we remember this pink cloud Main Street USA, which is very safe. And as Megan said, you know, the thing about ships can sit in a harbor, but that's not what they're for. And when you're a child clutching a ticket book, that's not what you're there for either. Mm. That's where the parents go. They go get coffee. You're going for the land. <laughs> well, Disneyland is, is really laid out like a fabulous game. And one of the things we're starting tomorrow is a, a book group here. And the book we're going to be doing is the game of life and how to play it. Well, this is like a game of life. It really is metaphorical. The more I thought about it, the more I thought, wow, this does work. There are several lands in Disneyland. Once you walk down Main Street, you have to get through, you know, kind of like the hero's journey begins in the quiet path. Bilbo Bobbins before he went off to the Lord of the Rings, you know, things like that, the hero. And they always say the hero has two things. You have, and we, have, we all have this, we're all heroes. We have a hero's heart and a monkey mind. <laughs> the monkey mind is that one that jumps from down to fear and worry and goes, danger, danger, I'd go back if I were you. <laughs> so anyway, it's that hero heart that gets you off of Main Street, and there are lands in Disneyland. One of them is called Frontierland. <coughs> Frontierland is where lots is known, but there's still those maps where it says, from this demarcation beyond, you don't know what's there. You don't know what's there. It kind of, it's the thing that kind of beckons the adventure, right? You can, wow, we could go there. Well, in Disneyland, you can almost go there, but there actually still are little areas that are cordoned off, and we'd be looking, trying to see what they are. Over in next land is Adventureland. And everyone in this room has been on adventures. Sometimes our adventures may be physical. We might go whitewater rafting. We might go to Europe. But don't you think an awful lot of our adventures are in inner? We go on inner adventures. Sometimes we didn't even really want to go on an inner adventure, but we went. Well, sometimes we didn't know we were paying the ticket, but we do. Because when we say, change, I love it, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on, and we hang out in an environment like this New Thought environment, where we really are saying that we are willing to go further into the delving of the nature of this one mind, this one power, this one presence, this one magnificent consciousness that is all there is and we're one with it? I mean, I know about you, but that sort of is a hook in the mouth for me to go, you know, I think I want to go a little deeper into that. Okay. So that's our adventure land. And that, you know, in the adventure land, there are some e-coupon rides in there. You go into fantasy land at Disneyland. That's where the castle is, and that's where the Matterhorn is. And the Matterhorn is an e-coupon ride. And you get on a, a bobsled, and you go sliding all up and down this mountain, and you come down, and you see the abominable snowman, and all these very, very scary things happen on all these rides that almost can get you. But of course they don't, and you land safely. And then you're off to the next e-coupon ride. The funny one in, in Disneyland is they have Tomorrowland. The thing about Tomorrowland is it kept becoming Yesterdayland. Because all the technology kept being evolved. In fact, by the way, this is an aside, but there actually is a fabulous movie out right now called Tomorrowland. And I don't know if anybody's seen it, but if you go to see that movie, it's a, it is an e-coupon ride of a movie. 
And if you go to see it, a lot of the the, the old Disneyland um, is there because they show some vintage stuff there, so it's kind of fun. Okay, so all the way around that, that land, that Disneyland, you've got the train. It's like the train of consciousness that keeps going around. And in Disneyland, you can actually get off the train at any one of those lands and stop and stay for a while. Well, it's the same thing for us. You know, we've got a train of consciousness that encircles our world. And we have the ability to get on and off of that train and be more or less aware depending on where we are. So this thing about these coupons, what's funny is the day that Greg talked about them, I went home and I found vintage coupons that I had been saving. And I went, I didn't even remember I had all of these. The important thing about these coupons is that somewhere around 1982, Disney decided to release having these coupons. They said, you know, we'll just, one size fits all, we'll just sell the ticket and everybody can ride anything. And that's like suddenly waking up the next day and discovering that all my tickets were like Confederate money the day after. <laughs> the war was over. <laughs> and I was sitting there the day he had spoken. This is like, what, about a month, two, a month, something like that. And I went, and I've got 15, 15 e-coupon ride tickets in there, in, amongst the A's and the B's and the C's. And you know what hit me? What was I waiting for? I was waiting for like the magic day where I would take all these rides. I mean, obviously, people may have given them to us. You know, you'd accumulate them. Maybe some people gave us some. But I really didn't realize I had 15 of the top prime tickets never spent. And I began to think about lost opportunities maybe I've had in my life where I was in a venue where I could have done the E coupon, but I did the B. <laughs> you know? I got on the carriage ride, or I decided to go in the little indoor venue that was a B coupon, or whatever it might have been. I guess I might say it was kind of like the, the play them small rides, the play them smaller rides. So it occurred to me, I began to think, you know, they may not be any value at Disneyland. They, they, they might have some value from a nostalgic standpoint. But the value that they could have to me is to get over the idea. I, I'm not a bucket person. I'm not a bucket lister because I think it sounds kind of mortal. <laughs> but what I did <coughs> think is, like, you know what? How about if I start giving name to e-coupons that I have left? I have 15 rides I haven't taken yet. <laughs> 15 scared, joyous things that I can start looking at doing. So I literally went that day and began to make a list of scary, uh, exciting things that I could do. You know, I think it isn't always going to be something that we can even name what those are and plan them ahead. Because remember this thing about letting go of control? You know, some of the e-coupon rides that we take in our lives, we didn't really want to get on that ride. You know, when you think about the four sides of life, the fact that we, we live in the area of our prosperity and abundance, and we live in the side of the relationships, past, present, future, ones we want, ones we don't want, ones we're trying to do something about, those guys that we want to fix, you know, the who the, who's the matter with me people, <laughs> more all of that. <laughs> then we've got the side that is the creative expression, whether we're in a job or we're doing some altruistic work or whatever that might be. And then there's that side that's our health. And those are the four sides of this game of life that we play. That's kind of our Disneyland in which we play in the day to day. And there are times when things happen there where suddenly we really are in Adventureland. And we didn't really want to be there. Anybody ever had that experience? Well, yeah. <laughs> Could be that day the boss called in and said, you know, there's this redundancy thing going on here and I'm sorry I'm letting you go. Or it could be, you know, this relationship just isn't really working for us and we've kind of known it, but we're releasing it. Or it could be, wow, I'm just not knowing what to do about my prosperity. I really don't know what to do. Or it could be that diagnosis that we've had that we really didn't want. 
I was sitting in Greg's office getting ready for this talk, and he's got a wonderful picture of Ram Das. You know, a lot of you remember Ram Das. He was in the 70s. You know, he was with Timothy Leary, and he wrote that fabulous book, Be Here Now. I mean, it's kind of like that platform that we metaphysicians stand on that came through Ram Das. And he's in his late 60s, 70s, something like that now. Mm -hmm. And he had a very severe stroke that left him so debilitated. And there's a beautiful movie called Fierce Grace. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but it's a fabulous movie about his stroke in which he talks about this thing, Fierce Grace. That stroke put him on such an e-coupon ride. And he came through that with such flying colors. And he's still on the ride. But it's really a state of grace there. <coughs> Another friend of mine recently went through having the experience of going for a routine test and next thing she knew, she was being told she had breast cancer. <clears throat> and from there, she began to do her work. She, got, she dove in. She dove in with that e-coupon. She went way down into that ride and began to see what it is that I need to do in order that I can have a higher idea and come through this and have it be something other than bad. What we can do in this teaching that's so beautiful is that we can take whatever the condition or anything that's going on in our lives and we can change its nature to us by changing its name. You know, in the Bible, the names of people change when their natures change. Saul became Paul when he was on the road to Damascus and he had his epiphany about serving this, the lessons of Jesus. Many, many, many examples of the, the names of people changing. We even sometimes we change our names. How many of you have a nickname? How many of you have had nicknames over the years? You know, it's like your nature changes. Or maybe somebody gives you a pet name. Well, that's who you are to them. So what we have the ability to do when we give something a name and give it a nature, well, the nature of good, which is what we are told God is, is really the name of everything. So when we can actually stand in the face of whatever might be going on in our e-coupon world and do that Emma Curtis Hopkins high invocation that looks something like, this too is good, this too is God, this too is for me, I now demand to see the blessing in it. What begins to happen is we begin to move into a state of grace. And I struggled with this word grace for a while until I found a wonderful working definition that fits for me and see how you like it. My definition of the word grace is the influence of God moving in and through my life to strengthen and improve me. Hear that? The influence of God moving in and through my life to strengthen and improve me. Show me where there is anything that would fall out of the state of grace when we look at it that way. So the amazing thing about these e-coupon rides is that we all have the opportunity to use them because every one of you gets to go home with a scanned copy, a little copy of an e-coupon that I made just for you because I want you all to have your own game and be able to play it. In the game of life and how to play it, this is one of the things that Florence Scovel Shin wrote at the very beginning. Most people consider life a battle, but it is not a battle, it is a game. It is a game, however, which cannot be played successfully without the knowledge of spiritual law and the, remember, successfully, okay, we're talking about consciously, um, without the knowledge of spiritual law and the Old and New Testaments give the rules of the game with wonderful clarity. Jesus Christ taught that it was a great game of giving and receiving. And she writes, Whosoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That means that whatever man sends out in word or deed will return to him. What he gives, he will receive. And so she goes on to say, So to successfully play the game of life, we must train the imaging faculty. A person with an imaging faculty trained to image only good brings into their life every righteous desire of their heart. Health, wealth, love, friends, perfect self-expression, highest ideals. The imagination has been called the scissors of the mind, and it is ever cutting, cutting, day by day, the pictures we see there, and sooner or later, we meet our own creations in our own outer world. 
To train the imagination successfully, we must understand the workings of our mind. The Greeks called it, know thyself. So in the game of life and how to play it, we're all able to use those e-coupons if we so choose. Again, I mentioned to you, and I mentioned in closing, that I had 15 of them when I started. I've used one. Michael and I went on a cruise to Cozumel, my very first cruise, our first cruise, and that was quite exciting, and I deemed that e-coupon e number one. So I have 14 left. But instead of thinking like a bucket list, I'm figuring, you know, I get to the end of the 14, and I have no more. You know what I think I'm going to do? Make more. I'm going to make some more. <laughs> and I encourage you, you can too. Because if we are really playing this game of life and it's really being made up by us as we go, and we are really in that state of dominion, and we can name it good, then there is no end to the e-coupon rides that we can take because we know that wherever it takes us, it takes us right to God. And that's the way it really is. And so it is. So we bring ourselves into this place of light right now. That light that we are led to is a light within. A light that surrounds us, comes from within us, is always present to us. So in this now moment, I affirm and accept that there is only one power, one presence, one light, God, the omnipotent, the omnipresent. And as I speak and know this truth for myself, I know that we can each know it for ourselves, that I am an expression of this one power and presence. That there is not a spot where God is not, and it is expressing itself fully and completely through and as me, right here, right now. So this morning, in this place where I am, I know the center of the universe resides, the infinite. That I am an expression of this infinite power and intelligence. And so is everyone else on this planet. There is only one, and I align myself and bring myself into complete unity with this one, knowing that therein lies my true power, that sense of steadfastness, that I stand firmly in the light of God, in the power of God, in the presence of God, in each and every situation, experience, circumstance in my life. God is all there is. So this morning I know that whatever experiences are going on in my life right now, anything that may seem amiss with me or with others around me. I name and proclaim it as my experience, knowing that I always have the power to name my experience as good, and that as I bring myself into this greater consciousness of good, that the things around me appear to change. And I know that there's nothing I ever need make happen. I simply let things move through me. I let the power and presence of God, the grace of God, move through me into every experience of my life. I hold steadfast in my thoughts and beliefs in my knowingness that God is all there is and that God is good. I stay steadfast in my understanding of this truth, that I am a senior consciousness in my life and that literally the appearances around me transform as I raise my consciousness into this higher level. 
and refuse to be moved by appearances. And I see those appearances move for me. What a great blessing this is to know my own divinity and the divinity of those around me. What a great blessing it is to know that this day is a magnificent day that God has created. And that it's a brand new baby day, a brand new day. That wherever I have been up until now, I can proclaim it for my highest and greatest good. And I know God says yes to this. Because it is Spirit's good pleasure to bring me the kingdom and to bring each of us the kingdom. In fact, I know that kingdom is already present and it's up to me to express the willingness to receive it. And I know that right now for myself and each and every one of us that I am steadfast in my willingness to receive my good. And Spirit shows me the way, every single step of the way, every day, here and now and forever forward. God is good all the time. So I give great thanks right now for the blessing of this beautiful day for this magnificent expression of life, for this beautiful church, and for all the people that surround me in my life, my family, friends, community, and for this beautiful planet, I do give thanks by saying thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> Knowing this word that I have spoken is complete and fulfilled in each and every way, I release it right now, turning it over to spirit, knowing it is complete, here and now, for each and every one of us. I let it be so, by saying, and so it is. Now's the time in our service we get to really join together in circulation, acknowledging our prosperity and abundance that is ours to already enjoy. And if you'd like to join with me in our affirmation today, I give freely in love and I receive freely in love. Let's say that together. I give freely in love and I receive freely in love. Now silently to yourself. And again, I give freely in love.